It's about, you know, unity. It's about being together. It's about making a difference as a unit, not as one individual. We have been stereotyped for all these years as gang members. Well, if you had a lowrider, you were a gang member. If you had a lowrider, you were out here being violent. You were out here, you know, to cause issues. The fact that we have to apply to be on the agenda, you would think the district would would want to take it upon themselves to talk about what's going on at the school, but you could understand how it looks really bad on them, so maybe they just chose to ignore it. It's summer break for Adrian Gomez, ASB vice president and junior at Castle Park High in Chula Vista, but he continues to take action addressing the poor conditions at his school. Gomez sharing photos of campus buildings and facilities from rotted wood, termites, broken windows, and a damaged football field when other schools nearby are currently getting upgrades. There is a huge problem with drugs in our community community, both uh, illegal and legal. To address that problem, a substance show and tell. Students at Claremont High spent the semester learning the history, the effects, and the risks of using drugs. It's an honor. It's an honor. Uh, this doesn't happen every day, so I'm, I'm blessed and I'm honored. I pulled over immediately and just ran to the officer dropped the gun on the floor, pulled the officer and struggled with the suspect for a good 25 seconds till the rest of everybody came in and helped. I opened his pocket and I took his phone and I dialed his wife's number because he couldn't open it. So I am the one, I opened his phone, looked for his wife and opened it and gave it to him because he was literally in a, in a horrible pain. And we know that Protected bike lanes, like the one that's being discussed, do save lives. And city officials agree, but they also want to address concerns and communicate more thoroughly going forward. For the first time in the long and colorful history of the San Onofre nuclear power plant, the U.S. Energy Secretary is getting a first-hand look at the operation. More specifically, the nuclear waste, which sits about 100 feet from the Pacific Ocean, and what to do about it. We know how to store nuclear waste safely. The question is where we do it. Guys, just absolute destruction here in Laguna Niguel after the coastal fire ripped through this community on top of a bluff here uh, in the South Orange County City. I want to show you some of the destruction that we've been seeing on this neighborhood street. You can see that this home right here just reduced to absolute ash. The front facade is still standing, but everything inside has just been completely destroyed. A home next to them is also destroyed. And as we move across the street, you'll see just how pervasive this fire was. This home as well also just decimated from top to bottom, a few walls standing, but that is about it. That is the story throughout this neighborhood here in Laguna Niguel. And I had the opportunity to talk with one woman who lost everything in her home, but she has an optimistic view about what this means for the future. A scene of devastation in Laguna Niguel. An entire block littered with homes hollowed out by the coastal fire, which surged up the bluff driven by high winds on Wednesday night. So it's beautiful, beautiful community. Really see the sloss is devastating. Lynn Mori evacuated quickly and came back to find her home completely engulfed in flames. This morning, all that's left is a pile of rubble. And one other thing. The captain, fire captain, said they were able to salvage the photo. So this is the one thing we have. Um, that we are able to salvage. And so it put a spell on my face that we are able to salvage this memory. It's a small item that now holds a tremendous amount of weight. Over $327,000 at this point. And people that have been donating through Helen Woodward Animal Center has been sent over there. And she said it's doing everything from getting food, vaccinations, um, you know, all the supplies that people with pets need because they're coming over with nothing but a sim simple little bag and they don't have all the supplies that these pets need. There are people in Ukraine who are uh, working a lot 24-7 they are working for animals. They just don't leave. Uh, they are there and they help. The problem is Russia is quite insane. Uh, Russian soldiers don't give a crap about the animal welfare, human welfare, anything. We are trying as much as we can, but uh, they're, they're, they need so much more. So because people want to help people and it's totally understandable, but animals in there are also in big, big need. 
and the smudge we can help they will find the place where to put the money because they, it's needed. Uh, they are not the member. She keeps saying thank you to us but we feel so thankful to her because without somebody like Helica that we've met um, who really is doing amazing work over there already we wouldn't know exactly how to help and this has been a real, real godsend for everybody who cares about those people and those animals.